play the game of pen and paper battleship, first, set up the game. To do this, first give each player a sheet of paper and a writing utensil. Next, both players will split their paper in half. They will then draw a 10 by 10 grid on the left side of the paper. On the top of the horizontal axis, they will write letters A through J, with each letter being placed over a square. On the vertical axis, they will write the numbers 1 through 10, with each number next to a square in the grid. Above the grid, write Opponents' Battleships. After creating the first basic grid for the game, both players will create the same 10 by 10 grid on the other half of the paper. Above the second grid, the players will write My Battleships. After both players have created their two 10 by 10 grids on their pieces of paper, players will decide where to put their battleships on their grid. Each player will have five ships in the game. Each ship will be a different length. There are some different versions of the game with slightly different ships, but for the sake of this video, each player will have one carrier ship that is five spaces in length, one battleship that is four spaces in length, one cruiser that is three spaces, one submarine that is three spaces, and one destroyer that is two spaces in length. Each player will place their five ships somewhere on the grid they titled My Battleships. They will do this by either placing them horizontally or vertically on the grid. A player is not allowed to place a ship diagonally. Each box on their grid will represent one space of a ship. So if this player was trying to place their length 5 carrier ship, they would decide on a start space for the ship and count five spaces up, down, to the left, or to the right of that space. After they decide on the five spaces for the ship to occupy, they will create a dark outline on their grid to represent the ship. They can also lightly shade in the boxes, so it is more clear to them where they place their ships. They will do this for all of their ships in the game, placing them wherever they choose on their grid. While placing, they must keep in mind that all of the ships must be placed within the grid, and the ships they place are not allowed to physically cross each other, so this would not be allowed. The ships can, however, touch, so this would be allowed. Players are also not allowed to split their ships, so this player could not split their two-space destroyer into single spaces. The ship must remain intact. They may also not bend their ships. They must remain in a straight line. After placing their five ships on the grid, each player should make sure to keep their grid hidden from their opponent. Finally, players should create a small key on the side of the grid, which can help them remember the symbols that will be used to indicate hits and misses in the game. X's will be hits, and O's will be misses. After both players have set up their grids and placed their five ships on the game board, players are ready to begin playing the game. Pen and Paper Battleship is a simple game where players are trying to hit and sink all of their opponent's battleships. To do this, they must blindly guess individual squares on the grid to fire at. To play Pen and Paper Battleship, one player will be the start player. Players can decide the start player any way they choose. The start player will begin the game by naming a specific square on the grid. They will do this by looking at the opponent's battleship grid and naming a letter on the horizontal axis on the top, and then naming a number along the vertical axis to name a specific square on the grid. So if this player wanted to fire at this square, they would say D7. After the start player names the specific square that they would like to fire at, the other player will look at their grid, titled My Battleships, and see if their opponent hit a part of one of their ships. They will do this by locating the D column and then locating the 7 row, and checking the square that the row and column intersect at. If their ship is hit, they will say hit. If their ship is missed, they will say miss. In this case, this player would say miss. After the opponent says whether or not a part of their ship was hit, the start player who fired the shot will mark the grid to indicate whether or not they hit part of their opponent's ship. If they hit a part of their opponent's ship, they will put an X over that square. If they did not hit a part of the ship, they will put an O to indicate that the square was a miss. Blue missed, so they will put an O on D7. After the start player names a square to fire at, the other player will take their turn. They will look at the opponent's battleship section on their sheet 
and choose a space on the grid. Let's say red picks to fire at F2. Now blue will look at their My Battleship section and see if red hit a part of their ship. F2 hits part of their ship, so they will say hit and place an X on the square of their ship that their opponent hit. Red will mark this on their opponent's battleship grid with an X on F2 to indicate that space hit part of their opponent's ship. After red takes their turn, blue will now take their next turn. Once again, they will choose a space on their grid. The game will continue in this way with both players taking turns, firing at specific squares on the grid, and indicating whether or not a part of their ship was hit. Whenever a player hits all of the spaces on one of their opponent's battleships, they have sunk that ship. For example, if the red player called out G2 on their turn, the blue player would say hit, because a part of their ship was hit. They would also say, you sunk my battleship, because the red player hit all of the squares of one of their ships. The red player should now make an outline around the squares, so they know they sunk that ship. It should be noted that whenever your opponent sinks your ship, you must tell them that this happened, so a player could not withhold this information. The game of pen and paper battleship is over when one player sinks all five of their opponent's ships. The first player to complete this task will be declared the winner. So in this game, if the blue player played here, they would hit the red player's ship. They would also sink that player's last ship. The blue player has sunk all five of the red player's ships, so blue is the winner of this game. To play the game of Pen and Paper Mastermind, first, set up the game. To do this, first give each player a sheet of paper and a writing utensil. At the top of the page, each player will draw four connected boxes. Next to this, write Guess 1. Make nine more of these, increasing the guess number by one each time. Next to each of these, make another smaller version of the four connected boxes. Above these boxes, write Correct Guesses. On the bottom right corner of the page, write My Code and make another four boxes that look like the guess boxes above. Next, make a key on the bottom right corner of the paper. X will represent the correct number and position, and O will represent just the correct number. After both players have created their game sheets, they are ready to start playing the game. The game of Pen and Paper Mastermind is a game where one player is trying to make a code and the other player is trying to break that code. The code maker tries to make a code that will stump the other player. And the code breaker gets 10 chances to try to break that code. With each guess, they will get hints from the code maker. To start the game, one player will be named as the first code maker, and the other player will be named as the first code breaker. The code maker, as the name implies, will make the code. The code maker will make a code using numbers 1 through 6. They can make any combination using these numbers. While making their code, they are allowed to repeat numbers. And they could even repeat all of the same number, so this would be allowed. The goal of the code maker is to produce a code that they think will be difficult for the code breaker to guess. After deciding on a four digit code, the player will write the code in the My Code section on the bottom of their sheet and keep their sheet hidden from their opponent. If players don't wish to use numbers for the game, they can use colors instead. The code maker can choose from different colors and put colors in the boxes instead of numbers. Players can also use other things like shapes or letters to create their code if they wish. After the code has been created, the code breaker will begin their task of trying to break the code. The code breaker will start by making their first guess as to what their opponent's code could be. They may guess using any number from 1 to 6, and the numbers may be repeated. To make their guess, they will write their four-digit guess on the guess one line, with one digit per box. After the code breaker makes their guess, they will pass their paper to the code maker. The code maker will keep their code secret, 
but they will check to see if the code breaker correctly guessed their code. To do this, they will compare their code to the code breaker's first guess. If the code breaker guessed their code right away, the round will be over. Most likely, they will not guess it, so the code maker will let them know if any part of their guess was correct. First, they will look to see if any of the digits of the code breaker's guess matched both the correct number and the correct position in their code. In this case, the four of the code breaker's guess was the correct number and it was in the correct position in the code. As the key shows, they would indicate this with an X. Next, they would check to see which numbers from the guess are not in the correct position, but are the correct number in the code. So in this case, the three was a correct number guess, but it was not guessed in the right position in the code. The one was also a correct number guess, but not in the right position. As the key shows, they would indicate these numbers with an O. The code maker will place these symbols in the correct guesses boxes next to that guess on the code breaker sheet. The code maker does not have to put these guesses in any particular order, so they can mix up the order of the symbols to try to throw off their opponent. They must, however, make sure that they accurately indicate all of the matching elements between their code and their opponent's code. After indicating the correct guesses, the code maker will pass the code breaker sheet back to them. The code breaker will use the information they gained from the code maker about their first guess to make another guess as to what the code might be. They will write their next guess in the guess two boxes. After making their guess, they will pass their sheet back to the code maker. The code maker will compare the code breaker's second guess to their code, just as they did with the first guess. Once again, they will indicate numbers that are in the correct position of the code with an X, and those that are just the correct number with an O. So in this case, this one is in the correct position, so this would be indicated with an X. No other numbers are correct, so the code maker would put a single X on the code breaker sheet next to guess two and pass the sheet back to the code breaker. The code breaker will continue to make guesses in this way and will continue to get feedback on their guesses from the code maker. As the code breaker guesses, they will be able to learn things about the code. For example, by guess three, this code breaker knows that there is no two in the code maker's code. They know this because their first guess told them that three of the four numbers they guessed were in the code. Their second guess of all ones told them that a single one was definitely in the code. The third guess told them that there was no two in the code because they still had only one correct number, which was the one. Players can use both the numbers they know to be in the code and those they know not to be in the code to help them crack their opponent's code. They will continue to guess until they either guess the correct code or use all of their possible guesses without guessing correctly. So in this example, this player guessed the code in six guesses. In this example, the player did not correctly guess the code in 10 guesses. After the code has either been guessed or the player failed to guess it within the 10 guess limit, the round is over. After a round of the game ends, the code breaker will get a chance to look at the code sheet and examine it for errors. They will look at the correct guesses section of their paper and make sure the code maker didn't give them any information that was not true during the round. If they do find information that is incorrect, they will immediately score three points and the round will be played over. The player gets the points because if they were told improper information, it could have affected the way they guessed. For example, let's say this code breaker ended the round and examined their sheet. They now know that the code maker's code was 3154. As they examined their sheet, they noticed that on their first guess, the code maker told them they had one correct number and one correct number in the correct position. They actually had two correct numbers and one correct number in the correct position. So the code maker missed an O in the correct guess's space. Therefore, the code breaker was given incorrect information about their code. They would immediately score three points and that round would be played over. It should be noted that if there are multiple mistakes, they do not score three points per mistake. They only score a single three point bonus and that round would be played over. 
the current code maker would have to make a new code, and the code breaker would get a chance to crack the code again. If everything looks correct to the code breaker, the code maker and the code breaker will switch roles. The new code maker will create a new code, and the new code breaker will try to break the code. After both players have taken a turn as both the code maker and the code breaker, the game is over. Each player will score points based on how many guesses the other player took to guess their code. So in this game, the yellow player would score six points because it took the red player six guesses to guess their code. If the code maker makes a code that the other player fails to solve, they will score 10 points, one for each guess. They will also score one bonus point for stumping their opponent, for a total of 11 points. As mentioned earlier, if a codemaker fails to give the codebreaker correct information about their code guess, and the codebreaker catches their error at the end of the round, the codebreaker scores three bonus points. If this occurred during the game, the three points will be added to that player's total points. The player who ends the game with the most points is the winner. To set up the game of Pen and Paper Connect 4, first, get a sheet of paper and a writing utensil. Next, draw a basic grid on your piece of paper. The grid should be 6 spaces high and 7 spaces wide. To save paper, you can fit several games on the same piece by either splitting the paper in half and putting two grids on the paper, or splitting the paper into quarters and placing four grids on the paper. Next, each player will indicate the bottom of the grid on their paper. The bottom will be along the part of the grid that is seven spaces wide. They can do this by drawing a thick line on the bottom of the grid. Players can also write bottom on the paper to make the bottom easier to locate. After creating the grid, each player will decide on their symbol they will use during the game. This will be the way that they indicate their moves on the grid. One player will play with X's and the other will play with O's. If you happen to have colors, each player can choose a distinct color as their writing utensil, and players can shade in boxes with their color during the game. If they would like to add a bit more challenge to the game, they could use similar letters, such as one player using M and the other using a W. The challenge comes from the fact that M and W can look similar on the grid. After the basic grid has been drawn, and each player has chosen their player symbol, players are ready to start the game. The game of Pen and Paper Connect 4 is a game where each player is trying to be the first to make a consecutive line of four of their symbols. The symbols can be in a line horizontally, in a line vertically, or in a line diagonally. To start the game, first, a start player will be established. The start player will draw their symbol inside of any one square on the bottom row of the grid. After the start player chooses where to place their first symbol, the other player will draw their first symbol on the grid. This player can either draw their symbol inside of an empty space on the bottom row or within a square directly over the other player's first symbol. While playing, players can imagine their symbols as pieces that are being pulled by gravity towards the bottom of the grid. So a player could not place their symbol here because there is no symbol below it to hold it in place. After the second player places their symbol, the start player will take their next turn. Once again, they can either place their symbol in an open space on the bottom row or in the box directly above another symbol. After they play, the other player will place one of their symbols, using the same rules. Players will continue the game in this way, taking turns and placing one of their symbols on the grid. As the game moves on, players will keep track of their symbols on the grid. The first player to get four of their symbols in a row, horizontally, vertically, 
or diagonally, and notice it, will call out Connect 4. They will then show their opponent where the four symbols are on the grid. The first player to get four of their symbols in a row and call it out will be the winner. As mentioned, the player must notice that they have connected four of their symbols. Therefore, it is possible for a player to miss that they completed this task. If a player misses it at first, they may call out Connect 4 at any time when they do notice their four symbols in a row, even if it isn't their turn. But this also means that the other player could still win, even if they are not the first one to connect four of their symbols. So if this player had connected four of their X's here, but had not noticed it, and had not called out Connect 4, this player could play their O here, call out Connect 4, and still win the game. The winner will always be the first player to notice their four symbols that they connected. It is possible for the game to end without a winner. If the last space is filled on the grid, and no player has called out Connect 4, the game ends in a draw. Before declaring the game a draw, Players should inspect the grid carefully. It is possible that a player missed their Connect 4 somewhere on the grid. If they find one, they can still call it out and still win the game.